let's talk about trade. Uh, do you worry at all about Trump's rhetoric on trade? What if he follows through on threats to withdraw from NAFTA or to start a trade war with China? What's the effect of that in the U.S.? The NAFTA issue, I think, is a really, it's, it's a huge issue if it happens, um, which is probably why it probably won't happen. But I mean, the, the, the thing about NAFTA is not so much you know, who are the beneficiaries. Who, I mean, I think, in fact, the United States benefits from NAFTA. But the main point there is that we don't, there, there's no such thing now as Mexican manufacturing and U.S. manufacturing. There's North American manufacturing. It's this tightly integrated complex of, of, of industries with, where you know, stuff is shipped back and forth. Different pieces of an automobile are made all over mm -hmm. the, the continent. Um, and if you break that up, if you disrupt it, then that's hugely, you know, the, then we're talking about a lot of disruption at the industry level. We're talking about a lot of plants closing, maybe new plants opening, workers, you know. Uh, it, it would be exactly the same sort of thing that people complained about from the growth of trade, mm -hmm. except this time, you know, it, it's like the old joke. one-time disruption would yeah, be substantial. It's, it's like the old joke about the motorist who runs over a pedestrian and says, oh, I'm sorry, let me fix it. So he backs up and runs <laughs> over the pedestrian again. And so um, that would be a hugely um, costly thing if, that, if we really disrupt NAFTA. Mm -hmm. um, that means that industry is you know, horrified at the prospect. And now, so in a way, trade is going to be the test of whether there's any of that Trumpian or unorthodoxy left. Uh, is he willing to balk you know, the big companies on that? R regardless of whether uh, there's a, a good remedy available to Trump or whether the remedy that he's talking about makes any sense, is, is he right in his critique that free trade and relatively loose immigration policies have depressed the wages of native-born American workers over the last few decades? Um, trade, a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, most estimates do suggest that, you know, a, a reasonable estimate suggests that if increased international trade did have some depressing effect on blue-collar wages in the United States. Uh, we import labor-intensive products that uh, reduces de the demand. It's, it's probably not huge, and it's probably mostly in the past. There's, it's not a continuing force of further downward pressure. Immigration, actually, the interesting, you know, the evidence suggests that immigrant workers are not, for the most part, competing with native-born workers. They're competing with immigrant workers who are already here more than that. Even though, you know, you take somebody with uh, 11 years of education from Mexico or Central America, compare them with somebody with uh, 11 years of education born here, they're actually very different. The skill set's very different. The occupations are very different. So the immigration thing, although it's the one that resonated most with, with Trump voters, is probably, in fact, uh, the place where his economics is just wrong. He has a better case on trade. Mm -hmm.